Welcome back to Case Blue, the GB2 maps, 22nd of November. Man, uh, guys, girls, did not sleep last night. Um, yeah. I'm not in the mood to work this morning and I just had a conference call rescheduled. So I might as well give you an update on what happened yesterday afternoon with Case Blue. Uh, and so if I sound out of it, it's only because uh, I went to bed at midnight and got up uh, three times between then and 4 a.m. Uh, with various animals and things throwing up. It's very special. And then I thought I'd share that with you. So, uh, Case Blue, GB2, deep freeze in the north, changes everything. I'm a little confused about how weather should work. I, I read somewhere that I thought weather could not change by more than two levels, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, from turn to turn, and I can't seem to find that at this point. I would imagine it would be possible to go from, uh, you know, uh, mud to deep froze, deep freeze with a sudden cold snap, but you would not go from deep freeze perhaps to light mud. That would make sense. That'd be three levels anyway. But, uh, so nevertheless, assuming that it, you can go from mud to deep freeze or whatever the, the most harsh, <laughs> extreme frozen is, we did that this turn and the Germans uh, decided to take advantage of that. And we spent quite a bit of time looking here. And in fact, I started to launch an attack here. Uh, and it took several aircraft attacks and uh, it was probably a poor choice of location. You know, there's a, you know, four steps there. So it's pretty brutal. So we kind of eased off on that. And then I was looking across here and, you know, you're allowed to look uh, at the top unit. And then of course I find this one unit, this one stack, where did you go? Here it was. Uh, that had just one unit in it, or maybe it had two, I forget now. I'm so tired, I don't even know what I'm saying. But, uh, so I was like, whoa, okay. So we dropped, uh, I dropped, changed all my plans, swept all the aircraft around here, and actually went to town on the aircraft. Uh, it was awesome. And then uh, the, uh, so we overran and then popped uh, these guys, the, 11th Panzer threw up to here and then we had other units in reserve and they then came through and took out a headquarters here and then have now kind of spread around in this wonderful little uh, noose, extending the noose. And the reason why we're going this way is to deepen the number of uh, units I have in zones of control on the rail to put these guys out of supply. Now, while it is true that they can trace supply this way, I'm going to choke off, uh, next turn we'll choke off the supply here. Uh, we're going to put a, an attack on both sides of that probably, or there, either way. Whichever's the weakest along there, we'll find that out and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll hit them pretty hard. Um, I brought a headquarters up. Subsequently, that then made me realize, well, gee, I really did need to bounce this guy out of, well, you can't see, duh, hang on, back up in Kaluga up here, we had a unit sitting on this road and it was really interfering with my ability to do trace supply. And I've got my extender underneath here. Uh, and so all this is really a cat, all this here is a catalyst for me moving this extender up here because I decided that's where I wanted to have it. Bounce this guy out by making a fairly expensive attack. I lost a step and, uh, and spent several T uh, knocking, there was two units there, knocking, uh, killing one, uh, one step and bouncing the other guys out. And that now allows me to control this road and, uh, well, I can't use the rail, but, um, control the road and I can now push, uh, SP more quickly as well, instead of coming around on this trail on the, on the left-hand side of the map here. So that's really all that happened in the north. We did make some minor advances up around Rajiv. I'm trying to push forces up as far as I can there to make them back off. Ideally, I'd like to be able to take Kalinin uh, before the end of December as well, but the supply net is going to be extremely tenuous unless I can clear this, uh, uh, this long road here and, and ship some trucks and uh, wagons. I'm very low on wagons, primarily because I've had to have um, uh, a couple of different extenders in different locations in this area because if you recall, we lost uh, one of our trucks which, which broke our extender and caused absolute mayhem. So 
I had to make a couple of wagon extenders. I've now flipped some of those extenders out because we've now moved our rail all the way up to here. And my goal is to get it up to, uh, and start driving it up this way now to Kaluga. And that will then free a lot of uh, transportation up for other uses. Not so much activity on this side of the, the Tula, the southern side of Tula. Uh, in fact, I'm feeling a little nervous about just how sparsely uh, populated this is. There are very few units in this area and certainly no reserves or backups, although I will be able to pull uh, the Bryant's pocket forces, uh, some of them this way, uh, to reinforce Kursk. Losing Kursk at this point in the game would be a horrendous uh, uh, setback for the Germans and would cut off this entire army here, which leads us to some heavy thinking for the Soviet side once it's their turn. Now, uh, a couple of interesting things happened down here. We had a, a, a street to street fighting uh, here, uh, the Romanians jumped in uh, with a, uh, a German division here and took this hex, mainly because it had three or four SP in it, and we managed to capture two or three of them, I think. Uh, I just don't want to mess with the, the huge stack. Uh, we had a bridging unit here, and now things are frozen. That's allowed us to move stuff across even faster, I think. Um, and then... Uh, so I, I had my guys out of supply here, uh, so I had to use a sausage marker and uh, drop some air, uh, air-based tea to them. We moved, we shuffled them over to here, and uh, through an error by the Soviets, they had a very weak unit in Izium here. Is that what it's called? Yes, Izium. And... Uh, uh, we managed to capture that town and that rail area there. And we popped through this way uh, and actually actually drove SS uh, all the way up to here and are fighting to capture Slavyansk. Uh, that attack did not go terribly well in the exploit phase. It was a reserve movement and attempted to uh, overrun there. That was a little brutal, but that's okay. That is putting a lot of pressure on Stalino. Stalino will be isolated uh, once we move past this location down here in the south. And things are going really well for the Germans right now. Uh, <clears throat> and the railhead is... Where is the railhead? The railhead is here. And I don't know why I thought I could ship two SP to there, but I can't really, because it's 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 got to have a, it's got to be a detrainable hex. So I'm going to pop those back in Kursk, and we'll have to shuttle those up. Um, right. Let's see. I think that is that is going to be it. That's the turn. So it was a lot of fun playing that. There were several attacks. It took a long time to run the. Uh, Particularly run this and get it right. I had to unwind a couple of things once or twice and uh, and go back. I also used uh, four of these guys to uh, try and uh, break up one of the units that was in reserve uh, that were back here. That was a very expensive attack. I actually lost a step and uh, did not pop the uh, did not pop the units out of reserve. You know, it was an unsighted, uh, unsighted, unspotted attack. So anyway, all right, that's the situation. We're going to now roll over to the 22nd of November's uh, bottom end of the turn, Soviet turn, and we'll see what happens from there.